What's going on smart people? In yesterday's video we converted a Lagrangian into a Hamiltonian in Cartesian coordinates. A few people commented saying that they wanted to see this done in a different coordinate system. So that's what we're doing today. Today we're converting a Lagrangian into a Hamiltonian using cylindrical coordinates. So let's get started. Let's do it guys. In yesterday's video we started off by defining a Lagrangian of the form m over 2 x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared minus a potential that depends on x, y, and z. Okay, and we're using this as a jumping off point. We want to convert this bad boy into cylindrical coordinates. Then what we want to do is find the generalized momentum in cylindrical coordinates, and then from there we can construct our Hamiltonian. I'm so excited, let's do this. First step is to define our cylindrical coordinates. x is equal to r cosine phi, y is equal to r sine phi, and z literally never changes. Okay, now the thing that makes this mostly different from Cartesian coordinates is how we evaluate our x dot, y dot, and z dots in terms of our cylindrical coordinates. The way that we have to do that is using uh, partial derivative chain rule. So for example, with x dot, that's equal to dx dr dr dt plus dx d phi d phi dt which is equal to, well, we can just evaluate each partial derivative. dx dr, the r goes away. That's going to give us a cosine phi dr dt is just r dot. And then dx d phi, derivative of cosine of phi is minus sine of phi times r. So it's going to be minus r sine phi d phi dt is just phi dot. Okay? And the same logic can go with y dot, that's just dy dr dr dt plus dy d phi d phi dt, which is going to be sine phi r dot. Derivative of y with respect to phi is going to be cosine, well actually it's going to be r cosine, if we're not differentiating that r way now, so plus r cosine phi phi dot and z dot equals z dot. Z doesn't change. Cool. Um, the next thing that we want to compute is or calculate is these squares. So if we want to find x dot squared, that's just this squared. Cosine phi r dot minus r sine phi phi dot. You guys Happy yet you're making me do this in cylindrical coordinates? I guess I did offer, so never mind, I take that back. Uh, but this is equal to cosine phi squared r dot squared minus 2 r cosine phi sine phi r dot phi dot and then plus r squared sine squared phi dot squared. This would be much more tedious in, cylinder, or in spherical coordinates because we would have two terms here. We'd have also a theta, which would give our, uh, our time derivative have three terms in it, and then we'd foil something with three terms. So spherical is just super tedious. It's the same logic, but it's just annoying. <laughs> uh, so that's this. That looks pretty ugly still, but let's go ahead and calculate what x, what y dot squared is. That's sine phi r dot plus r cosine phi phi dot squared, which is equal to sine squared phi r dot squared plus 2 r, let's write that as a cosine first, dot, and then plus r squared cosine squared phi phi dot squared. So that tells us that x dot squared plus y dot squared is equal to the sum of each of these terms. So we've got a mutual factor of r dot squared here, so we can factor that out, r dot squared. 
And then we just get cosine squared plus sine squared. Okay, these two terms are equal and opposite, so they sum to zero. These two terms have a mutual factor of r squared and phi dot squared, so we can factor that out. So it's plus r squared phi dot squared cosine squared plus sine squared. And these are phi's, but I mean it's kind of you understand you already know that. And then this identity just means that that goes to one, that this sum of squares goes to one, which means that um, x squared plus y squared, y dot, sorry, is equal to r dot squared plus r squared phi dot squared, okay, which tells us that x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared is just r dot squared plus r squared phi dot squared plus z dot squared. z dot didn't change. Cool. Now we're finally ready to write down what this Lagrangian is in cylindrical coordinates. And that tells us that L is equal to m over 2 r dot squared plus r squared phi dot squared plus z dot squared minus r potential that now depends on r, phi, and z. Dope. The next step, moving on, not wasting any time, is to calculate our generalized momentum. And the generalized momentum, pi, the ith component, is equal to the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to that coordinate's time derivative. So for example, p sub r is equal to dl dr dot, which is equal to, well, it attacks all of this, that goes to zero. The derivative of r dot squared is 2 r dot, so the thing that survives is a factor of m r dot. p phi is dl d phi dot. We're just going to get an extra factor of this r squared times m, so m r squared phi dot, and pz is dl dz dot, which is just m z dot. Cool, and what will be helpful to do now, once, and I'll show you why once we get to it, is to solve explicitly for r dot phi dot and z dot in terms of these momenta. That tells us that r dot is equal to pr over m phi dot is equal to p phi over m r squared and z dot is equal to p z over m so this is our next step that's all checked off the very last step is to finally calculate what our Hamiltonian is. Remember, the Hamiltonian is a function of our generalized coordinate and our generalized momentum. And it's equal to the sum over i of our i -th component of the generalized momentum times our generalized velocity minus our Lagrangian. But since our Hamiltonian is a function of q and p, not q, p, and q dot, we want to convert these q dots into q dots in terms of the momentum, which is why we just did this here. So we can write our Hamiltonian h is equal to pi, so let's do, this is just a dot product, pr times the ith component, so that's going to be uh, r dot, which is pr over m, plus p phi, and our phi dot in terms of the momentum is p phi over m r squared plus p z p z over m minus our Lagrangian so minus this but like I just said we want our dots in terms of our momentum so this is minus uh, m over 2 r dot squared is going to be in terms of the momentum, so it's this squared, so pr squared over m squared, 
plus r squared phi dot squared, so that's phi p phi squared over m squared r to the fourth plus z dot squared, which is pz squared over m squared minus minus r potential, so it's plus v of r phi and z. And now we just have to go through the algebra of simplifying all this stuff. So this is equal to pr squared over m plus p phi squared over m r squared plus pz squared over m minus, so one factor of m is canceled for each, minus pr squared over 2m minus p phi squared over 2m r squared minus pz squared over 2m plus our potential. Okay? Okay. So, let's write this part down here. So we have h is equal to, well, pr squared over m minus pr squared over 2m is equal to pr squared over 2m. P phi squared over mr squared minus P phi squared over 2mr squared is equal to P phi squared over 2mr squared. Pz squared, Pz squared plus Pz squared over 2m plus our potential. And finally, we can factor out a factor of 1 over 2m, so we get h is equal to 1 over 2m pr squared plus 1 over r squared p phi squared plus pz squared plus v of r phi and z. We did it! Oh my gosh! Imagine if this was in spherical coordinates. That's all I can think about. But that's all there is to it, guys. There's only three steps, really. Step one is write down your Cartesian Lagrangian. Step two, do all this. Step three, write down your cylindrical Hamiltonian. There's nothing more to it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Should I be an absolute mad lad in the future and do this in spherical coordinates? Let me know in the comment section below. I have a feeling you get the picture. But let me know anyways, and I'll see you guys there.